Well, I, I wrote my name on the list. I have one question. Earlier this year, uh, the Innovation Center looked at stats for the placement of an indoor soccer facility. And I remember it very clear that the users of the indoor soccer facility was generally in the east side of town. And the comment made by council at that time is, is that, well, that's fine, but there's nothing in the west side of town. If there was something in the west side of town, like the West End Community Centre with indoor soccer facility, then it would make it, make it easier for people to get to participate in soccer. And if you look at that map right there behind us right now, and you realize that where we are putting the West End Community Centre is right generally in part of one of the uh, redder areas, uh, if we listen to you today, uh, Council's decision to place this in the West End at that facility uh, might have been the right decision at the time. And I just, but it was your stats, so maybe I'm giving a comment more than anything else, but it was, so your stats have actually uh, proved with the other report and this report that maybe it might make sense for us to, that was a good decision. Uh, I had one other question. I'm going to come reserve and come back after Frank Manzo. Councillor Manzo. Well, to Paul and Chris, what's the age group of these youth get, in, get involved? What's the age group? The age group for youth crime is 12 to 17 years of age. And uh, what's the timing of this? Because I like to know what the timing is. Is it late at night, early in the morning? Um, those aren't statistics that we've explored through this project so well, far. This is where they cause the problem, because I know. Do you think that the, the curfew bylaw should be back in existing again? Because we had a bylaw. It's still in, in effect. It was never appealed. The curfew. Uh, I, now, Councillor Manzo, is that a fair question to ask the, the Innovation Center that are just compiling data well, with I'm, some I'm comments I'm made from that, that data? I'm that there was a curfew bylaw and it's still in existence. Yeah, I agree, there is. There is. It never was rescinded. But uh, how many police officers do we need to enforce it and whether well, or not we're going to? Well, when we were kids there, they, they came around all the rinks when we, in the wintertime. They came to the rinks at 9 o'clock. We were in. We had to go in. If you didn't go in there, you were you were taken down to the station, right? Yeah, and then no, you were you were talked to. Why were you not in there at nine o'clock? Why were you out there alone? What would what what are you doing? These are the things that that they, the police asked in those days. But today, I don't know why that curfew bylaw didn't stay in existence because I don't think you had you had less crime if you had that curfew bylaw. We did see, a, you know, a lot of the crime was occurred at the schools during school hours and at the malls during uh, operating hours. So those are daylight hours. Right. That was the only pattern that, that we saw, but we didn't, to look at actual time of day would have increased the amount of data analysis probably by double. Uh, it made the, the project significantly uh, more costly. Well, there should be a study on, on that too as well, because the kids are out there uh, late at night, or uh, the age groups, because if they're the age group, they, they should be under parents' supervision. If they're not under parents' supervision, and why? Why are the parents out in the pubs? Is that, what, is that what's happening? This is what's happening. I see it all the time. Councilor Manzo, do you not think we should approve it tonight and turn it over to the community yeah, to bring okay. some answers no problem. back? All right, I, I do remember my question, because it had to do with the initial report that prompted this, uh, this resolution to look at this data. And uh, there, I think it said there was a 28.9% increase in crime. Could you clarify whether that was wrong and your data is, are, are, is different? Can you just, all right, like, it's was the data misleading that, that suggested us down this road? All of my comments later, but I just wanted to get that clarified. It's not necessarily wrong per se. It's, um, I'll just rewind to that slide. Um, we saw that they didn't report numbers on drug crimes. I'm not sure why. Um, and the numbers in the Municipal Performance Measurement Program report included all types of crime, and we only included um, the ones with significant numbers. Um, also, what was it, Chris? Uh, 
they didn't report the crime in the first year, they did later on, right? Mm -hmm. Was it that they didn't provide the crime stats in 2006, but they did in 2000, part of the code? Oh, I'm not sure about that part. You don't want to at least answer this? Um, well... Do you, do you want to answer this question? I got this from you. We'll, we'll let the police answer the question. <laughs> I'll do my best to try. I'll do my best to try and. and um, I guess. I guess all I'm trying to do but find out is that did we have better stats than council was first approved, uh, first told uh, about 18 months ago? There have been changes in our, and there are ongoing changes in our reporting procedures and the way we report crimes, and that can, from year to year, skew the statistics in a short-term study like this, where we're only looking at two or three years of data, um, and that's it's part of our internal reporting process in the way that we do that so I'm not I came to this project somewhat late in the game so I can't speak to these specific numbers but I can speak that during this time frame there were changes in our reporting processes and procedures that may have had some impact on the difference in the numbers and the way that in the numbers that these people that, that that the innovation center used looking not at all of the crimes but at specific crimes that we chose to focus on and really that's the other part of it we focused on a certain number of crimes not all of the crimes committed by youth. Only crimes where an individual was charged, not crimes that were reported, but not followed up with charges or convictions. So we focused on those areas. But I believe somewhere between 2006 and 2008, there was a change in the way that they were uh, recording some of the stats. Right. And I think that's uh, number uh, two there. Okay, I'll speak into the microphone. Sorry. I, I think there was a change from 2006 to 2007 and 2008 in the way they were recording the stats. I think part of that is it's it's a bit of a uh, you know a mystery to look at what was happening where during during that path, but I believe some of the they weren't re including some of the certain types of crimes in 206, and then by 208 they were including them. So it's it's making the numbers greater, but it wasn't that there necessarily was a greater amount of crime. It's just that the, the numbers were greater because of counting new things. Yeah. I have one. This, this is the same issue that happened with domestic assaults a few years ago. There was mandatory reporting, therefore the stats went up because everything has to be reported where if there were no charges before it was not, uh, it was not recorded. And I think that one of the valuable things here is that I think between the police and ourselves we've created something that we consider as a, as a solid base so that we can go forward the next several years and give you something that uh, you know compares against where we are now. I just want to point out um, number three on this slide. Um, it's one of the major reasons why our numbers are different than the, munis the municipal performance report. And it's because the municipal performance report includes multiple charges. We noticed that in 2007 there was an individual who had over like 300 counts of fraud. So that would have counted as 300 in the municipal performance report and that would have counted as one in our report. So that, that's also a huge difference in the numbers. We were actually looking at the youth instead of the total amount of crime in our community. Right, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Councillor Fada? Other questions. Uh, very short now? Yes, very short and sweet. Because I got all my questions answered. Yeah. Do I, I want to move on? Uh, for, uh, for police services, if you may, please. I know I have um, comments. Question one, um, vandalism. That, that's the same as mischief in terms of the report? Mischief, yes. not, vandalism, that, that's the same, yeah. uh, same crime. Yes. Okay. If someone commits vandalism, that seems to be a very prevalent problem in Sault Ste. Marie, i.e. Uh, mailboxes and so forth. Are they held responsible for the damage caused to the things that they destroy? Is our system dealing with the individuals in a way where they're, you know, we're talking about um, first time offenders, we're talking about ones that can be reached and probably saved from further crimes. Are we doing the right thing and dealing with them in a manner that shows responsibility? 